So now we have the last race of the day. It's the, uh, sorry, the last race of the morning session. Uh, and it's a, a heat of the Diamond Skulls between J.G. Bogatsky and it was Graves Tension. from the USA, Thomas Graves. Go. So we're expecting a really exciting race here. I've got to say the reason we're seeing it is because in the qualifiers there was a withdrawal, which meant these two men were left as the last two qualifiers, the fastest two who didn't make it into the main draw. So effectively what we're watching here is a row off between these two as to who's going to join the rest of the scholars in the main draw. As we pick it up here live about halfway down the course, we can see that Bogatsky from University of Oxford um, to the right of your screen on the Bark Station. Looks like he's held that lead, but Thomas Graves really hasn't given it up. He's coming from the USA. He's not given it up as they come here through halfway, and I think James Rimm for a cracking race. Not only that, Greg, it's their, it's their chance they didn't realise they had, and so they, they want to make the main draw tomorrow and race one of the, one of the top scholars around. They've, they've got to put it in now, otherwise they, you know, they don't, they've had a chance at qualifying and had another chance now. They don't want to lose it, and it looks like Graves is is pushing back. It's going to be hard down the enclosures, but he's, he's definitely looks like he's got momentum on his side. That's right. It's it's Josh Kabalczykowski, who's really having to pay the pay the price now for that early pace. As Tom Graves at the bottom of the screen is really coming back, and this is a great head-to-head -head sculling race. See Josh there taking a look over his left shoulder and seeing that the the man from the US is coming past him. And you, you can almost see by looking at it, even if you don't know much about rowing, that one boat looks like he's rowing in mud and the other one looks like he's rowing through water. And the uh, Braves from, from the US is, is just, he's paced it very well. He didn't crack when he went behind and he's, uh, he's leaning on it and he's going to be through with the big boys tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. So, as, it's a long race, it's a long race at Henley. So despite that fast start from the man from Oxford University, it was actually Tom Graves who managed to get into that long, strong rhythm. Now it looks like that's taken him through well as they're coming down. Coming to the Remenham Club with the different flags flying outside it. And you can see where he went through is at the three quarter mile. Just before that, that Tom Graves seemed to get through. And our man Josh Bojaskis is going to have to do a lot to come back from there. No, I never raced the... Uh the diamonds and I never race in a, in a single very much but I can imagine if you are behind in the diamonds it's a very lonely place in a boat on your own you can't see your can't see your opponent if they're ahead of you and so you've got to be incredibly mentally strong to hang in there and then have the confidence to row back through and then fair play to Graves he he was lent on and he's, he's answered the question that's right he held his nerve didn't he, in the early part of the race and now just settled into that rhythm and uh, you can see the water's looking just a little bit bumpy now to the scholars. You see it more, notice it more in the, in the single. You see on the right of the screen, a lot of crews going out to have a training session during lunchtime. This being the last race before that lunch break. So they're all on their way up, going to try and get a chance to have a, a, a row over the course and get used to the conditions. Not only will they be feeling the bounce of the water, you feel the bounce of the water more, you feel the wind on your back more. It just takes that much longer. And that's a disadvantage to both move that much slower. But what it does mean, a length in a single is, is easy to catch up, whereas a length in an eight is a, is a big distance. Yeah, and Tom Graves really is using his experience. He's a US international. Um, he represented the US at the World Cup one and two, but racing in Verazin in Lucerne in the men's single skull. Um, he actually won gold in the eight at the uh, World Junior Champs in, nine, in 2001. So he's really the man with the experience. He knows how to race the single. So he wasn't thrown, really, by the early pace from the Oxford man on the right of the screen. It does make you wonder why he didn't qualify straight away, though. It does. I wonder what he was doing in that qualifying race, whether, uh, whether it was just tight, whether he had a bad row that day. Again, it is a very different type of race because you're doing it on your own you haven't got anyone alongside you it's a time trial so if you undercook it 
then uh, you're gonna you're gonna suffer the consequences and they're lucky that they got another chance to, to get through to the main draw. Yeah, and Bogatsky was in the Oxford boat, uh, the blue boat this year, that lost in the boat race, uh, having been in the ISIS crew that won in 2015. Um, he's an experienced single sculler. But, um, and he's got rowing at Cardiff University because his mate said, you're big enough to row, one day you could row for Cambridge. And he said he had to apologise, he went to row for Oxford. So we see Tom Graves there looking really, really strong and, and big in his shoulders as he comes down here, just pushing the boat into the headwind, pushing the boat into the stream as he comes down here towards the line. And it's going to be a solid win, which will put him into the main draw. This is the only race we're going to see in the Diamond Skulls today, but it's going to be a win for the man from the USA, Tom Graves, ahead of Josh Bogatsky representing Oxford University crossing the line now. So there you see confirmation of that win for Tom Graves in the Diamond Skulls.